Hey guys, I'm Michael from eKids. It's so good to see you. We are going to have a new study. Are you guys ready? We're going to learn about Moses. Now, now some of us have learned a little bit about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then his son Joseph. And Joseph ends up going to become like the number two most powerful guy in all of Egypt. Yep. But something weird happens. Uh -oh. Between Joseph and Moses, there are many, many years that happen, and the Hebrews end up becoming slaves to the Egyptians. I know, crazy. 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 They go from being like in charge to being slaves. So that's not good. Something has to change. Well, we're going to find out the thing that changes is, well, Moses. Yep, that makes sense. God uses Moses to do some really cool things. We're going to learn the story about Moses. But but as we're learning it, I also want to remind you to remember Deuteronomy 6.5. Check it out. I've got my, my Bible here, my action Bible, and it's and I have Deuteronomy 6.5. Yeah, you can see I have it highlighted right here. Let's read it. And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your strength Deuteronomy yeah, six that's five. Deuteronomy 6 5 Deuteronomy six so what five. I want to think about is well how did Moses love God with all of his heart all of his soul and all of his strength Deuteronomy and what about the other characters in this story did they love God with all of their heart all of their soul and all of their strength Deuteronomy six and five. how how do we know? And then maybe there are some characters in the story that, well, didn't love God with all of their heart, all of their soul, and all of their strength. <laughs> so let's figure that out. Also, I want to, to ask you a question. Are you ready? Do you love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength? That's a good point. And how? If someone were to write a story about you, would it show that you love God? Hmm. Hmm. So, and if so or if not, how can you show that you love God? If you were in the story that we're about to show, what would you do? How would you show God that you, that you love him if you were in this story? So let's think about these things. Let's think about loving God if the characters did or the characters didn't. Let's think about yourself, whether you do or you don't love God. And let's think about how the characters show it and how you can show it. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Are you guys ready to watch the story? All right, let's do it. Here we go. This is Moses. Hello. Moses was an Israelite boy born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. But God had a special plan for Moses. Oh, eh? And he spent his childhood in the palace of the Pharaoh. You see, when Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh -oh. Pharaoh found out what Moses had done, and he tried to have Moses killed. So Moses ran away from Egypt. He stopped in the land of Midian, and seven sisters came to the well to give water to their father's flock. Some shepherds came to drive them away, but Moses stood up for the women. Now these sisters were the daughters of the Midianite priest named Jethro. When Jethro heard what Moses did for his daughters, he sent for Moses. So Moses came to live among the Midianites, and he married Zipporah, one of Jethro's daughters. Huh? Meanwhile, back in Egypt, the old pharaoh died, but he was replaced by a new pharaoh who continued to treat the Israelites poorly. Ah oh, man. Israelites cried out to God because of the terrible things that the Pharaoh made them do. God heard these people and knew it was time to act. Yeah. 
One day Moses was tending Jethro's flock when an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses through a burning bush that would not burn up. Whoa. Moses stopped to look at the bush and he heard the voice of God say, Moses, Moses. Hello? God then told Moses how sad he was because of the suffering of his people. He told Moses that he wanted to do something about it and he wanted Moses to be the one to do it. Oh man. But Moses did not think he was the right person to go. God said, I will be with you. Uh, but Moses said that he wouldn't know the right thing to say to the people. So God said to tell the people that God himself had sent him and promised Moses that his plan would be fulfilled through Moses. But Moses still said to God that he did not think the people would believe him. So God said, what is that in your head? Oh, okay. Moses said, a staff. God told Moses to throw it on the ground. Wow, okay. Then God told Moses to catch it. God showed Moses another sign. Huh? And told him to show these signs to the people if they did not believe what he said. Moses still didn't think he would have the right words to say. But God said that he himself was the one who made a man's mouth and gave him the ability to speak. So there was no need to worry. Yet even after all this, Moses said, God, please send someone else. Then God got mad at Moses Oops. and said that he would send Moses' brother Aaron to speak for Moses. So Moses went back to his father-in-law and told him that he needed to go back to Egypt. Moses and his family started their journey back to Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand, for this staff would be the tool God would use to demonstrate his awesome power to the Israelites and to the Egyptians. <laughs> Whoa, the burning bush. What a crazy story, right? And we see that there's a lot to this story. We see how, yes, how Moses had grown up in the house of Pharaoh and did something that he shouldn't do and he had to escape. He goes into like this this crazy like wilderness or something and he, and he meets a new family and he gets married and all these things. But then God's calling him to do something important. He's calling him to, well, set his people free. You know, and he talks to him through a burning bush, which is crazy. But here's what I want to know. You know how, guys, we've been talking a lot about prayer. You know how I tell you guys almost every Sunday that when we get a chance to, I tell you guys to, to ask God to, um, well, to thank God for things, to ask God to help other people, then ask God to help you. And then finally, I ask you to, to stop and like listen to God for a moment. Imagine what he looks like, what he sounds like, you know, all these things. Well, imagine sometimes that maybe you're doing that, you're praying, you're spending time with God quietly. And what happens if God actually speaks to you? What if you actually hear God telling you to do something good? The question is, if you're in a situation like that, like how Moses was in, when he hears a God speaking in a burning bush, if that happens to you and God speaks, what would you do? Would you love God with all your heart? all your soul and all your strength and do what God tells you to do? Or would you not listen to God and not do what he says? So that's the challenge. And, and, and something I want you to know, God never asks you to do something wrong. You know, when, you, when, you're, when you're thinking and, and you're hearing your voice in your head, and sometimes you, you hear that voice in your head wanting you to do something wrong, that's not God. That's not God. Sometimes you might hear a voice in your head telling you to do something right. And sometimes that is God. It takes a long time to understand when God is talking to you or when God is not. But the best way to figure that out is to practice. To sit quietly and pray. And when you're done talking to God, just sit and listen. 
The more time you spend with God, the easier you'll, uh, of a time you'll have hearing His voice and figuring out what that actually is. It took me years and years and years and years to figure it out. So there's no hurry. You have your whole life to figure it out. Okay, well guys, um, that's what I want you to do. I want you to, to spend some time this week and I want you to spend time praying and talking to God and just listening sometimes. Sometimes you talk, sometimes you listen. My grandma told me something cool. She told me that I have two ears so I can listen twice as much as I talk. I have two eyes so I can read twice as much as I talk. So how about we try that? Let's, let's talk to God and let's pray, but maybe listen for twice as long as you pray. You never know what will happen. All right, guys. That's it for this week. I love you. I hope you have a fantastic week. See you next time. Now, bye guys. See ya.